Hope you guys are ready for another episode of Double D's in your face. That's right. What kind of questions do we want to jump into there to kind of entertain the folks there? With because we have the the presence of uh, Don Fry myself, so we have the sequence of Double D's in your face. Well, so, so we, we had a fan question that was from they wanted to know about um both from both of you about your childhood upbringings. Just, you know, things that you did when you were a child and what it was like for you both growing up. And since we have your son here, maybe he's got some. Well, little... Dan, Dan got excited um, when he uh, first turned 40 the first time and, and they had electricity, you know, it was invented. So. <laughs> With his buddy, Ben Franklin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He tied, he tied they the were key. flying kites he together. Tied, he tied the key to the, you know, Ben always, ben always got, got the credit for. All of Dan's work. That's why his hair is white. Yeah. That like that shock. Yeah, all that shocking, shocking. Yeah, electricity. He said, "Just run around with that kite, you know, no problem." But what about what about lightning? You know, <laughs> eh, you're okay. Good for you're it. okay. Yeah, it's good. Don't worry. By the time Dan woke up, Ben Franklin invented electricity. Yeah. <laughs> but let's go back. So, so who wants to go first? Let's give a little bit of the upbringing of. Uh, of the beast, well, that was, would be the beast. Yep, that's so. Well, again, I, again, I saw well, your gun uh, and got scared. <laughs> I was I, like, well, "Well, we'll start with Dan." <laughs> okay, well, I, I mean, I had seven other brothers and sisters on the on the farm, so I'm son number two, child number again, child number two, but still son number two as well. I have older brother Dave. It goes Dave, Dan, Mark, Mike. And then I have a sister Eva. Then then come next brother Rod. Then uh, Kathy and and Barbie, so total of uh, eight kids, mom and dad, growing up on a hundred twenty acre farm up in the New Lothrop, Michigan area. My parents actually both went to New Lothrop High School. It's kind of ironic because we, we live right on the on this the border of uh, Machos and the Lothrop, and a bridge that had washed out. Oh, I, I'll say 40, 50 some years ago now uh, was a a factor that came into play that uh, now the the neighboring kids that all walked up, we all, well, we all walked up the same, you know, half mile dirt road, dead end road that uh, you had two different buses would, would show up at the same corner. You could go to New Lothrop schools or you could go to Montrose school. So we just basically chose to go to Macho schools and uh, the the kind of running rib between the two booster clubs between Macho's and the Lothrop. They're always saying that the the Lothrop booster club was always threatening to rebuild the bridge so that the Severn brothers would all be forced to go to you know New Lothrop high schools. So that's a scary threat. <laughs> well, well, again, it just well because I mean, well, you got to look at that. Uh, between my four other brothers and, and myself, we we all average at least two different state titles apiece. Nice. And uh, uh, brother Rod was actually the best. He ended up getting three. Oh, so, shit. so what what did uh average like morning consist of for you? Like when you, when you weren't going to school, like what what chores did you have to get up and do? Well, you still have to yeah, you have to do chores. It don't matter if you're a day off of school, or if you had to go to school, you still had to do chores just, just a little bit earlier, that's all. So, I mean, a uh, couple of my brothers, you know, they were they had to tend to the cattle. Other couple may have to go tend to the pigs. Again, watering them, feeding them. Uh, my chore was I had to milk, peg the milk cow every every morning. So, every morning, every evening, milk and peggy the milk cow. <laughs> How much milk would you get out of her? Uh, you'd you'd get literally uh probably I don't know, probably two and a half, three gallons out of her each milking. And what 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 is well, I guess what's cool about that is uh the milk, you you let, you let the milk set out and literally all the cream rises and then uh my mother would would uh, would actually skim it off and take it through cheesecloth so that any impurity stuff like that would get would get filtered out of it. But uh there's just like a nice rich cream would come out of it where you can either whip it into whipped cream, you can whip it into to butter. And then you had some of the best taste of milk ever. I mean, it was uh, to know what real milk tastes like versus, you know, this pasteurized stuff or 
non-fat milk and you know things of that nature. So growing up, having real butter, having real uh, uh, milk, uh, eating farm fresh eggs, uh, you know, every fall, every spring we'd get probably between four and 600 chicks in. And by late fall, it was the same Valentine's Day massacre massacre because you'd be killing about two, three hundred of them at that point in time because you need to get the population way down. You just want good uh, laying hens over the winter months just to keep your eggs in. And, and uh, you didn't want to have to keep uh, going out there and just for have have large chicken population. So we did that. But we also have hardest one was the butchering of bunnies. Because you you always look at Easter, you look at the soft, cuddly bunny. That was probably the hardest one to, for me anyways, to butcher was bunnies. Uh, the way they cry and scream. That really is, uh, 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 yeah, well, again, that's where I remember watching that with uh, my brothers of it. Because, again, we would grab them by the two hind legs. You kind of like swing them back for a little bit so they elongate on out, and then you take the back of a, a basically like the back of a hatchet, and not not the not the not knife edge, but the back of it, and you'd you basically would hit it and, and kill it, break its neck and, and kill it all at once by hitting it in the brain stem. Mm -hmm. And I just remember that first time, it's like swinging it back and forth and swinging it back and forth, getting ready, getting ready. That like going, I don't want the animal to suffer. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I hit it so hard, I, I literally. I practically knocked the whole the head off of it uh, using the back of the the hatchet in the first place. But it's kind of like going. My dad's like, you know, Jesus Christ, you know, did it hit it that hard? I got making well. I'm like, pops, I didn't want it to suffer. Do, do so, the chickens really run around? Still, yeah, we get off their head. Heads. Yeah. Well, I, chickens, well, yeah, that, that old expression, you yeah. know, uh, you know, chicken, you, you run around like a chicken off. with his head cut off. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you you'd see him just run around until flop around and yeah. And the, and chickens only lay eggs for like what like a few years, like what four or five years or something? Two or three, I think. Two or right? three, depending on the breed or something. I don't know. Yeah, it just depends on the breed. But we always just again, we, we always we always always had a in spring, we always had a fresh batch would, would come in. So we always had good uh good egg layers, and then you start thinning out the roosters, because the roosters just get meat and ornery. And the roosters will start going after you know chickens and, and just well there's you know that that expression a hen pecking party i watched that before where for whatever reason they'll pick on just one hen and they literally will keep picking at it picking it to where it has no feathers left on its back and, and then literally they'll start pe keep pecking at it and, and kill it wow. so it's for whatever reason don't know what it was but they could they would be just do that to a, to a chicken. Racism. Is that what it was? Yeah, it's racism. Mm. You know, chickens are not the chickens are not the smartest animal either because you can have a rainstorm and literally they all they all look up in the air with their mouths wide open and literally will drown. I thought that was a turkey. No, that chickens. No, trust me. It, uh, we. We, me, and a couple of my brothers, I got in big trouble once because we had a bunch of chicks that were out that all drowned, and uh, my pops was not very happy about that one. <laughs> so you said you always had a milk. Uh, what, was it Peggy? You said Peggy the yeah, cow. Her, her her name was it was Peggy the milk cow. I did not uh, name it. It was uh it was just the name that my mother. Did you eventually out for it. Did you yes. eventually get to eat Peggy? Well, Peggy. Yes, uh, you learn. You learn really quick. You don't name any of the animals on the farm. You don't give them pet names because sooner or later they're going to end up on your plate. And even Peggy, when she got to the age where she wasn't producing milk anymore, well, Peggy got turned into hamburger as well. It's like the, her name is Prime Rib. We had a cow. We had a cow named High Hamburger yeah. back when the girls were little. <laughs> Their pig named Bacon. That's that's pork chop over there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, well pigs, uh, sows, especially the female hog, uh, uh, sow. After she's been around, she's given, she's kicked out a couple of different uh, litters. Literally, a lot of sows they'll, they'll literally start to have a tusk. They they'll, they'll actually have a couple of tusks starting to come on out, and they get rabid. They get to the point that they'll, you know, because you, you know, you in the 
after she's having a giving birth to a litter of uh, of her piglets, you know, you, you basically you have to castrate her. And so at that point in time, I mean, it's 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 snagging all the different little piglets out from the pen, and they're squealing up a storm. You know, mama, uh, mama son there, she's going berserk. And you usually have to have one brother there with the two by four knocking the the sow back down back into the uh, into the pen. And while the while the other couple are ones holding on the legs and the other ones neutering away. <laughs> Did, so so you, I guess yeah. I guess if we want to put this in today's context, if, if there's any of those woke individuals that um, woke men that want to be turned into females, you know, I guess I, I I still have a razor blade. I know exactly how to you know cut off their genitalia there to go to Severn Farm. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I, I, I can save them. Uh, well, okay, Don. Now, would I save them any money? No. <laughs> Thank you, there, Don. You didn't let Dude. me down. Dude. Well, you'd, you'd bore them to sleep with some stories, and then they'd wake up. <laughs> they didn't have to, have to spend money on anesthesia. So you're not supposed to get, like I said, don't name the animals and stuff, but did you have an animal that you got close with that you were sad when you had to kill it? Uh, sure. I mean, uh, well, okay. Who here has never heard of the great book Old Yeller? Yep, that's a good one. Okay, so to have a dog eventually that got so old that you didn't take it to the veterinarian and and just basically put it to sleep. You basically took it out. You took it out back somewhere, a little bit walk. You had had a little 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 face to face confrontation, and and then basically uh, you put a bullet in its head. Yep. Yeah. So you had to put your dog down. Yeah, I've had to put a couple of different dogs down. I mean, well, uh, the hardest part. Well, yeah, th- that that and and uh, maybe uh, periodically an overabundance of of barn cats because you always always every, it seems like every farmer has a certain number of barn cats and they keep down the mice and rat population. Yeah, and uh, but then if they you know because they're, they're not being taken to the uh, uh, veterinarians of, uh, of that nature do not fix, so they keep putting out. So uh, I, I used to say that every one of the cats that we had on the on the farm, they were all named Tippy. So, you know, but they might be Generation One Tippy or Tippy Two, Tippy Three. But uh, there's all all kinds of Tippies run on there. They eventually had to, you know, pull out the twenty two and uh, thin out the Tippy population. <laughs> so so what was your dog that you had? That you had to put down. Well, I mean, well, again, uh, well, one was named Tiger. Even okay, it was not a tiger, but you know, it's just it was a German Shepherd. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that sucks. I've had a few Rottweilers that to put down. Yeah, no, like I said it, it's a uh, you know, we, uh, usually the farm dog. It's uh, I mean, it, it's you know, just another mem- member of the family. Oh yeah, yeah. So they're out there with you in the field every day doing stuff. Probably yeah. You know, I mean, they're just you know they're looking for you know fun and excitement the same way you are, and literally you'd be out there fishing and stuff like that, and they'd be out there looking to try to you know bite the fish off your your your, whatever you're pulling in. So, but it was it was like a Tom Sawyer type of a life there because growing up on a farm, yeah, we had you know we we made uh, forts up in, in trees and things of that nature. We had uh, rope swings across uh, the creek and stuff like that. We used to swim in the creek, you know. So it was like, you know, to to, to just uh, really just just a fun, uh, just a fun childhood. That's awesome. How far was the the creek away from you? Oh, I mean, uh, I'd say just maybe a couple hundred yards. Yeah. So yeah, each like on each, your, each on your farm. Yeah, right on the farm property. It, it had it had a couple branches through it to where they're they're like it branch out off sort of be like two smaller streams and one larger stream that would come through it. It was it was just a great uh, you know like I said it was a great farm. Uh, the uh, the land it's three generations three generations that's that's been in the Sever name. My grandfather owned it. My father owned it, and then it was sold to uh, my oldest brother's uh, son Andrew. So it's kind of kind of cool because. 
my grandfather, his first name was Andrew Severn. And now there's another Andrew Severn that still owns it three generations later. So it's kind of nice. I think I've told the story before that I remember going to the the granary with uh, my grandfather, and my father, and my grandfather was basically was illiterate in the sense that he could not read nor write. But I would watch him go up into the granary there, and he would make his mark in the ledger. A lot of just men they just had a mark that represented you know, their name, and he would make his mark in the ledger. And uh, when they were selling uh, you know beans or wheat or corn. Well, yeah, whatever it was that we were taking up to the grain at the time. And but, that well, but, okay, Don, this is where I might have learned some of my uh, some of my larcenous type ways because my mother, my uh, my mother would simply say, Let's, "Boys, we need some money. Let's back up the corn crib, load up half a dozen bags of of, of corn. We go up to the uh, up to the uh, uh, the market or." Uh, not that to, well, to, to the granary, yeah, just to, to the granary there. And we would simply just sell these half a dozen bags of uh, corn and we'd have mad money that we would go, we would go to to the uh, Bud Lake. We would have to head up to the cabin. But my, my mother just had a way of, okay, let's uh, let's back the old car up to the, uh, the because uh, we had a gas, a uh, great big gas tank that was regular gasoline for the tractors. <laughs> well, did we bother to tell our pops that we're, we were backing up with the car <laughs> and filling up? No. So we just, you know, we had one of those nice big round tanks right there with the nozzles and stuff like that that you see right at, like at a, a gas station, fill up the old Blue Goose mm -hmm. station wagon off to Bud Lake or whatever, up to the, uh, we uh, had, had a, uh, we had, uh, my parents owned a cabin up in the Harrison. Uh, Michigan air, area, so going up there for whether it be for a weekend or for, for just the the day. Hmm. So I think I might have learned some of my ways of corruption through my mother. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, wow. Doug? What was it like for you growing up? In I, was, I was never, Vista? I was never a kid. <laughs> Not with a full mustache. <laughs> That's it. Thank you for watching another episode of Double D's <laughs> in your face. You better like, subscribe, and share or I'm going to come to your house.